Welcome to the 71st episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name is Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome to returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could be here. Uh, thank you for pressing that subscribe button. We really appreciate that. Before we begin today, though, Colleen's going to talk all about our giveaway. And I'm pretty excited about it. Exactly. And Colleen, you can tell us all the details. And I know some of you have been asking about dates and you will have all that information. Absolutely. Correct? So we have... Nine over 900 subscribers, and our goal is to get to a thousand. That is the goal at this point in time, absolutely. So, we're really, really excited about this. So, while we were away, um, we reached that 900 subscriber um, number, and so we decided we would have this giveaway. There are two project bags, so I'll show you those. So, the first one is what I'm going to call the black project bag. They're bo both project bags are the same size. The second project bag is this brown one with pine cones, which is very cute. We're happy with that. And then the third prize, and I'll let you hold those up, um, involves four large stitch markers, four small stitch markers, and then there is a, a progress keeper that has our little car on it, which is great. And it also comes with a needle cozy. And some of you wanted to put the needle cozy with that too. Right. So. And so if you use, it works with circular needles as well. But if you use double point needles, this will handle six inch double point needles and eight inch double point needles. And these little snaps are great. It makes me very happy when they snap like <laughs> that. That means it works. It does. Absolutely. So I'm thrilled about that. So this is how you enter the giveaway. Um, what you're going to do is comment down below. You're going to let us know if you have anything particular you'd like. I'd like to win the black bag. I'd like to bring the brown bag. I'd like to win the needle cozy. You can say that. You, you can, may not win those prizes though. You you might win. You might put in that you win. You want the bag bag, the the black bag, and that could be your preference. But if it's only the brown bag is there, that's what you would win, correct? So what you're going to tell me is. This is the one that I like the most, but I'm willing to accept anything. Okay. Okay. And when and you, you have to subscribe first, too. You have to subscribe. So subscribe and then comment down below. You can just make a comment. You're entered in. If you make a comment and mention which of the bags that you would like, um, then that's fine. If you say it really doesn't matter, you just like to win, which I'll have to tell you in my world that I just like to win. Um, and so that's good. So just comment down below. Now, somebody had, a few people had asked us, when does it close? So we are going to close this um, at the end of September. Okay. So the last day to enter is on Thursday, September 30th. Midnight midnight and then 2021 just in case this video is up <laughs> for a long for, time for 2022 you're right or, and then we're in trouble that's so, right september 30th midnight 2021 2021 that's good and so that will be the cutoff and then what we will do is i have been writing down people's names and what their preferences are and then what we're going to do is use a random number generator and we will select those numbers so that the next podcast will be able to tell the winners. Right. Okay. So do subscribe and enter the giveaway because that makes us happy to be able to give things away. Yeah. And we do appreciate those subscriptions. It looks like everybody's been trying to get as more people, which we really appreciate. And so uh, that subscribe button, just keep hitting it and telling all your friends. That sounds great. So first we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object is a hat and it's by Susie Knits Chunky Monkey Beanie. Hard to say that. And the reason for this hat, by the way, this is a great pattern if you're looking for a quick uh, Christmas knit, wonderful pattern. My niece sent me, all the way from Alberta, some yarn that's called Marengo. And it's 100% Coriadale and it's hand spun and dyed in Calgary. So lovely. Now, when it, it arrived, this is all that's left. Okay. You know what this reminds me of? You know the dreadlocks? Yeah, it does Doesn't actually. It? Absolutely. So the neat thing is it's got my color purple in it, which makes me happy. It's got a little bit of brown in it, which also makes me happy because I have a big brown coat mm -hmm. that's helpful in the and winter. And it's kind of fuzzy there too. You see exactly. That? So anytime it was a little bit um, not as tightly spun, I gave it a little extra twist when I was knitting it. 
Now my niece, whose name is Meredith, hi Meredith, hopefully you're watching, uh, my niece had said there might not be enough to do the entire hat. And so knowing that, I decided to try and find some yarn that would go with it. And I found in my stash, it's always nice to use stash. I like that we um, use your stash. Now yeah. this is the old fashioned of Bernat Softy Chunky. I'm not sure you can get that type of Softy Chunky. It is now that when you buy it, it's a little bit thicker. But what I knew was I had a color that would go with the yarn. Is that because it's been in your stash for a hundred years? Um, to be honest with you, I had a pattern that was a child's pattern that I absolutely loved knitting. And I loved this softy chunky. It was great for kids because it's 100% acrylic, easy wash, um, throw in the wash, throw in the dryer. I had made, I don't even know the number. I used to make it when a colleague at work was having a baby. I would make that for the baby uh, because then as the child grew, they could grow into it. Um, when they changed the thickness of the softy chunky the pattern that I was using didn't work anymore really so what I did knowing that I wanted I had a few of the other colors and I wanted something that would go with those colors so I did a little bit of um, searching on eBay and I found some of the original softy chunky oh good so that's how it happened to be yes it has been in my stash for a little while so I was really lucky that it was now here is what happened that turned out really nice. I'm really happy with it. So Look at that. I made the brim. I haven't taken a picture and sent it to my niece yet. So if she's watching, she'll see it. And if not, I, that's my job. So the acrylic is there. And I'm kind of glad that it is because I really like the Coriadale yarn. It's going to keep my head really, really warm. I was going to say, this feels like it's going to be really warm. Yes, it's going to be really warm. But like I was a thick. little worried against my face. I tend to be... You know, I, I, that I was a little worried about. So it worked out well when she said, there's not enough there to make a full hat. You're going to have to do some adjusting. I thought, I know how to adjust. So I, I knew the softy chunky was nice. So this will be the, this will be softer. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And that'll be softer against your forehead. and Right. Exactly. Nice. So I'm really, really happy. It'll go with my black coat. It'll go with my brown coat. It's It'll go with my gray coat. Pop of purple in there. That's I know. Cool. That's yeah. all we want in the world is a pop of purple. Well, that turned out great. Yes, I'm really, I like really it. happy. It feels like it'd be warm and, and it feels a little rustic too. Like it this does. Part feels it rustic. does. Absolutely. So you just hit it off there. Oh, thank you. I think your niece will be just thrilled with what you did. Yes, I was. It was really such a nice surprise. I was really appreciating that. All right, so that's my first finished object. My next finished object is something called the It Bee, and that's by Laura Nelkin. And you're going to see a lot of Laura Nelkin's uh, patterns um, because while I was busy in the summer not wanting to sit with big, heavy, things on my lap. I was doing a lot of little things. Now this, you really like Lauren Elkin. You see her a lot. I do. She always has, let me turn this around so I make sure. Yes. So she always has, um, it's like knitting lessons inside a pattern. So she shows you how to work with this. Now this is called oh. Dando Cotton Fine. It's called Japanese uh, cotton tape yarn. This is this looks very lacy. It is very, very lacy. fine yarn there. It is. Now, the nice thing is, when it's warm, this will be nice around my neck in the summer. It's got a little bit of beads to hold it down, which I really like. It's just enough um, to wrap it around, and I'm really happy with it. Now, I know that Laura has done this pattern, but made it so you can make it bigger. I like the size of this. I'm you. really happy with yeah. it. Yeah. And this, this was one nice, of those nice ones color. where you could get... I mean, there was a green one and a blue one and this one, this is as close to purple as there was. And I was really happy with it. I love the beads and it was a new technique for putting the beads right. on for me. Now this, would this be a beginner knit or an intermediate kind of knit? Huh? Um, I think like maybe an advanced beginner. There were a lot of things, but as I said, Laura has all these. She's helpful with She's that. helpful and she, when she puts out a pattern, she shows you things that you'll need to make yeah. the pattern happen. I really like that. You wouldn't want to get this close to Velcro. No. Like, I've got a couple of coats. I don't know if you... you yes, I, think I you do. do. We've got this raincoat that's got Velcro. It yep. was an expensive raincoat. Yes, and, it was. And if you touch something like this with it, you've just ruined it. Exactly. So you got to be very careful with yeah. that. And I must admit, that was all... When you finished it, it was kind of all... I don't mean wrinkly, but just kind of bubbly. And so having it blocked, 
it, it's made it look a lot nicer. So don't, when you're making something, if you think, oh, I'm not really sure I like it, block it first before you decide whether or not you like it. Because blocking makes all the difference in the world. And that's what you've learned. You learned that's that what along I've the way, yes. All right, so that's my finished objects. And me? I do have finished objects, um, or finished object. Uh, but let's, I can talk about those in crafts if you okay, like. Okay, Because it's more of a, like a crafty finished object. Okay, that that's sounds okay. great. All right. So next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is the Beadic Mitts. And once again, that's by Laura Nelkin. So I am one of the Lola's Choice Club members. And so these come out every other month. And so this was the one for September. Um, and once again, there was a orangey color, there was a blue color, and there was purple. And purple came to my house. So it made me very, very happy. So this yarn, once again, is going to be warm. It is, it must have been Coriadale's time for me. So this yarn is called Exmoor Sock. And it's rustic also. Yep, it comes all the way from the UK. And it's got 60% Exmoor Blueface, 20% Coriadale, 10% Zwarbles, which I've never heard about, and 10% Nylon. So it is a little rustic. I must admit that it blocks nicely. I wouldn't want this on my, my neck. Well, maybe you, don't, so, be, don't be knitting me, uh, you know, what, cowl, cowl with this No, stuff. no, no, no. So there are the beads. I'll let you hold okay. that up that way. So what I did was I made one, and I have smaller hands. And sometimes when you make the smaller size, it's a little more snug because you're used to buying things at the store and they fit anybody's hands. And so when you make them fit your hands, I find this with socks sometimes, it's like, oh, I'm not sure. But I knew that it would block because you needed to block it. So I'm going to show you blocking. Are you ready? Let's see if I can do this without breaking it. Oh, this is one of those. Um, yeah, so just be careful because there's pins okay. coming through. So there is it blocked, and you, I don't know if you can see the difference. I'll just hold this up. This is um, bloomed is the word. So I, I um, soaked it, and then I blocked it out. Now I, what I did, because I was, it was a little tight going over the fingers, I just did a little bit of extra stretching there. Same thing on the thumb, but it's kind of hidden on the other side. But I really like this pattern. It's similar to Fair Isle knitting, but it's with beads, and I'm really, really happy with it. I love the green, pop of green on it. It's good. So these are called T pins. I have other pins that are um, more like a U pin, which I prefer, but I had put them in a box and couldn't find the box. <laughs> so I actually, when I was trying to find something else today, found them, but this one's already blocked that way. So I was happy. I know that this is gonna fit better now that it's blocked. It, which is not that it didn't fit, but it, it parts were a little snug. Nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's Just, great. Yep, so that's that. So that's the first work in progress. Now, some of the things that are works in progress were works in progress before, and they're still works in progress. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to show you where we are in the process. You're really so, enjoying this bead uh, work. I do, actually. It's just a little bit different, and it tends to be a smaller project, and so it goes quicker. But sometimes the finishing up is the problem, and that's where I am right now. So the next one is the Pioneer Cuff, once again by Laura Nelkin. And I bought the kit for this, and here is what it is. So it is very, very soft. It's Anzula Cloud is what it's called. It's a light fingering weight. So when you buy one of Laura's uh, kits on Etsy, um, then there's beads, and there's the yarn, and there's the pattern code, and you get all the things with it. So this one I like. I blocked it but I didn't sew on the clasps yet. And the reason for that was when it came off the, the blocking mats, I wasn't sure I liked how I blocked it. Oh, really? I like this. Yeah, it's nice and soft, yeah, but I'm a little soft. worried that I didn't, not stretch it too much, but I didn't make it, I didn't make it as much as I think I should have. It's very nice. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. So it's yeah. gonna be a nice to have a cuff That's like nice. that in the winter, you know, and a little bit of bling. Done up? Yeah. There you go. So that, I mean, it's not, it's almost done. I just have to decide, am I gonna block it again or not block it again? Uh, this you have seen, this is um, the film, is what this is. Now this isn't from a kit. Um, I had this yarn from a different kit actually. And the other kit I decided not to do. Now I'm not, 
Initially, I decided that I was only gonna wrap this around my wrist once. The pattern itself is twice, but I thought I'll just have a little cuff. I don't, my hands are, wrist Tiny. is pretty small, so I wasn't sure I needed to double wrap it. Um, but I'm really happy with how it's going. I'm, once again, close to being done, didn't finish it. You know, if you watched the previous episode, you know it was an eye issue. All of a sudden you're doing eyes and fine stuff oh, and beads. They were talking about the nose again? <laughs> yeah, the nose. It's all about the nose. Anyway, so needless to say, all that fine work didn't get done while I was dealing with that stuff. All right. Okay, so that's that one. And then my last um, work in progress is called the bead aisle. And it is a cuff, once again, by Laura Nelkin. This was also part of um, the Lola's Choice Club. And you're going to see the difference. This is with Emma's yarn. By the way, I could easily order this yarn and make a sweater. Um, the colorway is called It's Casual, and it is just that. It's Why beautiful. did you like it so much? Like, What, well, what is it about this yarn that you like? Um, Color or the texture or... It's 100% superwash merino. I love the color. What's the color that There's like? little bits here and Flex. there, but I really love the color. It is a really nice color, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Now... You can't really see it, the color on this. No. There's too many So uh, once beads. again, comes with the clasps and the beads and all of those things. I think she's got more, um, some different colors of this. Right. But you can see... I'm this just, is cool. Yeah, it's very cool. But do you see how much it's rolled up? So blocking this is a, a It needs to be blocked. Okay, and the idea with this one is it wraps around twice um, and then it supports it. So I really was, this was the start of, it's something similar to the, the fingerless mitts, um, but I really like this. So really I have to block this and put on the clasps. Very and nice. And then I will be all done. That'll be really nice on when you're ready. Nice colors. I like yeah, that. I'm really happy with that. Copperish. Yeah. Yeah, a copper's worth a lot of money, apparently. Emma's yarn is from Four Pearls Yarn Store. Down in Florida. Down in Florida. And when I saw this yarn, I thought, ooh, I could order yarn for a sweater. And May goes, your stash, call me. Stash. Remember your stash. <laughs> we are going to go in our stash and take pictures of your stash. Yes, we could. It's the very height. well organized. Mm, it is. <laughs> and maybe we should have a tutorial on how to organize your stash. Because you've could. got it like in clear bins and you have it mm -hmm. kind of coated or whatever yeah by weeks and th what i did the last time because i was ruthless i was ruthless when i wasn't out. able to do so, so much knitting i was ruthless and got rid of bags of yarn that i had you know what happened at one point in time was i cleared out a bunch of yarn and then somebody at work had given you a couple of bags of yarn so more came in so i thought it was time to be ruthless and while i was being ruthless i was organizing and i wrote down what was in each bin so I I have that book I just go and say okay what do I need and then I can go from there it's perfect when you're oh. organized it's perfect it does very helpful so those are my works in progress and next we're going to talk about our craft adventures well on our craft adventures I've been up to some things I'll get into that but before I do Colleen what have you been up to well I have started this kit it's called Meadow the Cow and it's a crochet amigurumi kit. I believe I ordered this off Amazon. In the kit... Has it been around for a while? Because I haven't seen this. Has it been around for a while? This kit? Yes. I haven't... Did it come in the door recently? No, 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 no. That's what I'm wondering. No, a long time ago when I ordered the other amigurumi so kit. So if you were looking for this, you probably wouldn't be able to get it. Because... Um, you know, like, it would have been at the beginning of this year. I okay. think you would definitely be able to get this oh, kit. Okay. Just, it's kind of cute. It is. It's really cute. And there are other, there's other patterns. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's in the kit is a cotton yarn, crochet hook, toy stuffing, pattern booklet, embroidery needle, and necessary accessories. So things like the ribbon and things like the eyes. And so I'm going to show you. So here's the pattern book. And it's written in a lot of different languages. I was wondering why it was so thick That's for right. a little thing like that. Exactly. Very detailed, good um, book. Yes, it's there. excellent. Now, I've got all the little bits and bobs. There's the stuffing. Once I open this, it's going to go and explode. That's good. There's nice um, yarn there. So I have, that's the cotton yarn. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's the start. <laughs> that's that. And then I have crocheted the ears that are going to go on like this. Mm -hmm. If you hold them that way, then those ears are going to go on like that. 
Um, and I'm always a little scared about sewing things on. I've got the safety eyes on. And so once I get this kind of sorted out, then I can start worrying about the That's body. That's very cute. Yeah, I really, really like it. I really am enjoying yeah, it. Yeah. So that is my craft, new craft adventure. It's some more crocheting, which is nice to do because it, um, somebody commented about working on crochet. Um, and it, it's a really good idea. I don't, if you like knitting and, and you like working with yarn, if you don't already crochet, it's not a bad thing to try and start to learn because it moves your hands in a different way. So you can do a knitting project and then working on a crochet project. And it's kind of a good idea um, just so that you don't get any repetitive stress injuries. I could maybe do a video of you uh, teaching crochet, to begin in crochet. Sure, I can maybe do that. a tutorial on that. Yeah, that I can helpful, do that. I'm sure. So it's it's interesting because I learned to crochet before I learned to knit. Is that true? Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm trying to think. No, I did learn to knit in, in when we had home economics <laughs> way back when. How can you remember that far back? You know how I remember that far back? Because there was a girl's entrance to the school and a boy's entrance to the school and we girls had to go up to where the home economics thing was. We did some embroidery, mm. we did some knitting, we did some cooking and all I can remember, I don't remember her name, but I remember the teacher saying, girls, stop coming up the stairs <laughs> like you're elephants. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's what I remember I, the joy of home economics and I also remember making my first hat and I was one of those kids who a was a crocheted hat not no it was a knit hat it. and I was making the hat and I just wanted it to be done because I was anyway did you like it back then like I you? really I mean I enjoyed knitting it was it was great but what I did was I kept going okay I think this is big enough I think this is big enough so then <laughs> It really wasn't big enough. So what I had to do, I ended up having to knit. Uh, it was really, actually, it wasn't too bad to figure it out. I knit a strip that came around again. So my hat that wasn't big enough, then had a strip around. So it was actually long enough to be See, a hat. Even back then you were innovative. like you. you well, it was either that or re-knit it. So it was like, <laughs> let's stop the, stop the insanity, as they say. All right, so that's my craft adventure and me. Um, well, I'm going to put some pictures up here. I did a welcome sign for outside of our front of our house. And if you want to do this at home, um, what it is, is just two fence boards. Uh, you put them together and, and there's the back of it mm -hmm. and you can um, join that together. And I stained them. I, they're actually cedar planks oh, and you can make it any height you like. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just stain it with a dark stain. Right. And what I did, I didn't have a... Um, stencil for right. my welcome letters so i just went on the printer and i printed out the letters and then i just uh copied them onto the wood how did you do um that? with that um carbon paper what do you call that paper carbon paper carbon paper yep. um i have a bunch of that stuff but if you didn't have carbon paper mm -hmm. you there's other ways you can do that you can uh I think do it with a pencil. You'd have to go on YouTube and look and right, see how you can do right. other ways of putting a pattern on. You could cut it out and draw around it. Right. Um, There's got to be ways of ordering carbon paper, I would think. There might be, yes. Yeah, yes, for I sure. Think so. um, yeah. I've just always had some handy. And also you can order um, stencils. Oh, that that's true. Too, yeah. You could do that too. Absolutely. Um, so basically, two pieces of wood, cedar planks, cedar fence boards, which is very inexpensive. Attach them together, stain it put your whatever you sometimes people say um welcome fall or a fall's beginning or you can have oh, wow. some people have christmas on the back oh that's cool and so then it's uh double right the thing i didn't really have time for that <laughs> um but it was a you know a fairly um beginner project if yeah. you're looking to get into doing some crafts and that right. kind of thing and wanting something for your front house so that's what i did it's really nice and yeah. people have commented about how nice it is so yeah that's so, good. Uh, yeah, it was a quick project, but there you go. And that's what I've been up to. And next we're going to talk about souvenirs. All right, May, do you have any souvenirs? I do. We do. We do. Uh, <laughs> we got this on uh, Amazon. It comes to the door. We got some pickleball paddles, a uh, pickleball bag. That's brilliant. Two paddles. Mm -hmm. Came from Amazon. Sorry, I didn't want to hit you in the head. <laughs> that's okay. And it came with four balls. Right. Now, it came with uh, two balls with lots of holes and two balls with not as many holes. Very similar. The mm -hmm. balls with all the holes is the outside ball. Right. And that's for the wind and that type right. of thing. Right. Makes sense. But this is how it came. I mean, it was really great. 
The two paddles fit inside, but I always put mine on the outside. So we know which one's so yours. So we know which one's mine. Yep. And it comes with a little strap. Brilliant. And I think we ordered this one day and it came the next. Hey, it kind of does that way. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we enjoy it so very much. <laughs> now. So I, I put it, I don't know if you know, I put it, well, I took the camera with us. I know, we she took there. the camera with her. <laughs> and so we had a lesson. Colleen and I had this little lesson. So I'm just going to show you um, what we learned on our lesson and what we practiced okay. um, from the, the person there. She was very good, but right. we have to go back and get more lessons because yes, we're we brand do. new to this. <laughs> and But we, we're really enjoying it and getting out there Absolutely. to do it. So we can't wait until we go out with more and there's four people and we can... Right. Um, first of all, we've got to learn the rules and the ropes. So Absolutely. I'll put that video up and then you will come be right back. I thought I would share with all of you today what we learned at our pickleball lessons. It was kind of fun. You need a racket, a ball, and you need court shoes, which would be very different than wearing running shoes. With running shoes, you're more apt to go over on your ankle, they said. You learn to serve. It's all below the waist, either underhand or side like that. Make sure it's below the waist. This is called the kitchen line or the non-volley zone line. And you can go and step into that step into that when the ball bounces, but you can't step into that if the ball doesn't bounce. So here, Colleen and I are, they call this dinking, and it's back and forth into the kitchen line. And we're supposed to be practicing here, which was a lot of fun. And you know what, it's a lot of fun and a lot of great exercise. I was bending down more times to get the ball. <laughs> and here we are again, dinking back and forth, keeping it within that kitchen. These are all new terms that we had to get used to. But it was a great fun fun time and um, maybe you want to get out and give it a shot. Well, hope you enjoyed that little video. We're just having so much fun with pickleball and if you haven't tried it, I suggest you get out there because I think it's a skill level that most people, people could do. Like uh, Physically, it's not too hard, especially when you start that dinking. It's <laughs> yeah. not as... Um, I don't find it like... It's a nice workout. It's it is nice. a great workout because you and I both found the stairs a little interesting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I do think that uh, a lot of the older people are playing that. So right. it's got to be good for, for older people like us and older. Okay. We'll be older, older. people. Okay. If we need to be. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was, that was what uh, my uh, souvenir is. And you? And for me, I took a trip out to the Little Red Mitten in St. Thomas. Hadn't been in a yarn store for a while, so I went, I drove out. It's a beautiful drive, and I love to look around that store. And I found a skein, and I picked this out purposely because I wanted to try it. So it's called Leo and Roxy Basics. And it is merino and nylon. Let me just make sure I'm not lying to the world. Yes, 75% merino wool and 25% nylon. Now, Leo and Roxy... Um, they do hand dyed yarn, but they decided to do this because it makes it a little bit of a lower price point. Um, and so there's just plain colors, but you could mix and match with their other yarn and with this as well. And so that's the big debate. What am I going to do? Now you may say, why did you buy just one skein? So I bought one skein because I wasn't 100% sure of the color and May wasn't with me and she usually is my sounding board whether that color would look good <laughs> or not. You have a lot of one skein now projects. I'm sure you right, do. Right, I do. So option one is I make a one skein shawl. Option two is I use this with another color and do a two skein shawl. Um, or option three is I think about making a sweater that is that color. And then you'd have to get more. And then I'd have to get more. <laughs> well, you know what I think would be really nice? You know that little shawl that you just showed that Lauren Elkin? Yes. Color? I don't know if you could use that yarn for that, but that um, would be really you nice. You could. It would make color. it a little bit bigger, but it would be perfect. Yeah, I like that. Exactly. That nice. It's really soft. It's I a love nice this. yarn. It is. That's it's beautiful. And it is made in Peru. Nice. <laughs> Peru makes nice things. Or Leo okay. and Roxy. Yes. Is it because of the alpacas there, or what is that? Uh, it's merino yarn, so I'm not sure. Hmm. Interesting. We should find that out. Yes, I know. We should know things. <laughs> Sometimes we don't. <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already uh, entered our 900 subscriber giveaway, please do. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe. subscribe to enter the um, giveaway. Uh, once again, it's the two project bags and it's the needle keep. You can 
make a comment and say, I like the black bag, I like the brown bag, I'm interested in the needle cape. Or you may say, I like this one, but I'd be willing to take anything. And that's okay too. So you have until, let's see if May remembers. September 30th at midnight, 2021. She is amazing. <laughs> that's why we call her that was amazing. Stressful. <laughs> Put her on the spot, been through, which is good. So do enter the giveaway because we're so glad that you're watching. We really appreciate it. It's great to be back. Time with us. And it's so good to be back. So until next time, you take care.